Emma Brackett is a trained assassin, but she has hidden the truth from her husband, Dave. When they decide to do a little roleplay to get their spark back, things get worse. Emma is changing her disguise in the washroom with the help of her devices. This is right after her latest job in Buenos Aires. Her handler, Raj, stays on the phone to help her with the target. He gives an accurate description about the man. Raj asks her to keep walking closer to where he is. When she spots the guy, she uses a laser device to shoot him behind a pillar. She keeps walking as the man falls down in the busy street. After putting her wedding ring on again, Emma makes her way through the airport and reaches home. Her daughter Caroline is very excited to see her. Emma has missed her a lot, and asks about where their men are. Dave is preparing her favorite pineapple chicken in the backyard. He asks about her work, and she confidently cooks up a story about teaching mid-level management to people in Nebraska. Their son, Wyatt, also comes to see her. The kids have set up a special table for them. Caroline has decided to act as the waiter while Wyatt plays the role of the bartender. Because of all the special treatment, Emma realizes she forgot their anniversary. She feels guilty while discussing this with Raj on the phone. Raj is happy with the Buenos Aires job and informs her the money has been wired. He discusses how her picture has been posted on the Darknet's most wanted list again, but he assures her he took it out in time. He still wants to her to lay low. She's unable to respond freely, and Raj can tell she's surrounded by family, but he has another job for her. Only she refuses to go again, so soon after coming back home. He reminds her that Sovereign has a huge reward on her head. If she doesn't work, Raj won't have the funds to keep her safe. She decides to call him back when she can discuss this freely. Dave can tell she's distracted. She claims that her work is getting overwhelming. When Dave leaves for work, Caroline shares a story about Mr. Fluff and the monkey prince. During this, Raj messages her to get Dave a present. Dave is reading an article at work about tips to improve their marriage. Kevin starts discussing his relationship with Trina and asks for advice. Dave thinks it's problematic that he wasn't invited to Trina's sister's wedding. Kevin agrees and looks up to Dave because he and Emma have been together for so long. Emma still feels bad about forgetting the anniversary, but Dave is very supportive. He has bought a sexy nurse practitioner costume for her. He suggests he wants to mix things up a bit. If he wants this, she's ready to pretend to be someone else for a night. But she wants to do it properly the next day. He thinks that's short notice for a babysitter. But Emma reminds him his sister Molly still owes them for Christmas. She wants them to go to a fancy restaurant and meet by chance at the bar. They're both excited about this role-play exercise, and try to kiss. But Caroline shouts out for her glass of water. Caroline is chasing Wyatt in the morning to get something back. Molly thinks it's great they're finally trying to take a break from work. Emma drives up to the hotel alone and heads to the bar. She looks around for a bit before ordering a vodka martini. Dave is stuck in traffic and can't even text her. When the bartender, Chaz, informs her she has a drink from a man, she gets excited. But it turns out to be an old man, who approaches her. He feels lucky he spotted a beautiful woman on his night out. He introduces himself as Bob Kitterman. She claims to be Alice Overby. He wonders if she's a model, because she looks very familiar. When she claims she is in finance, he understands why he felt an instant connection with her. But he doesn't want to bore her with his work, which is apparently in the same field. When he drinks to her loving what she does, she notices Dave coming in. She continues talking to Bob as Dave walks past her. He gets himself a drink while she steals looks at him. Bob can tell she is vibing with Dave, but thinks she can do better. When she claims she might not be in the market, Bob realizes she wants to be left alone. When he's gone, Dave nervously approaches her and pretends to be a stranger. He introduces himself as Jack Dawson. This makes her laugh because of the Titanic reference. But he stays in character and wants to buy her a drink. He asks Chaz to bill it to his room. Before he can give a room number, Bob interrupts them and asks Chaz to bill it to his own room. He thinks Dave is Jack, and claims he wants to share the good news he got from work with them. Dave claims be a wildlife photographer who used to cover combat zones. Bob seems excited about making new friends, and orders some shots for them. He explains that he acquired a huge contract. But he's curious to know which part of finance Emma handles. She claims she's involved with mergers and acquisitions, and is not based in New York. They all have shots, after which Emma and Dave cough. She asks for water, but notices Bob is making too many puns with her. This alerts her, and he drinks to her and people who have fallen for her charms. She gives him a sideway glance as he drinks, but he wants another one. Emma and Dave try to be polite about asking him to leave, and he gets the hint. He lets them know his room number just in case. They're relieved when they're finally alone, and continue their roleplay. Dave is very drunk, and Emma carries him to the room. When he starts kissing her, she asks him to get comfortable. As he waits in bed, Emma removes her wig and checks a timer on her phone. She finds Dave passed out when she gets back, and leaves a note about getting aspirin. She knocks on Bob's door and lets him know she's unarmed. He asks if Dave is one of her targets, but she refuses to give details. She can tell Bob knows something about her. He explains that he recognized her face from across the bar. He stepped away in the middle to get a better look at the tip sheet. He also knows her real name is Anna Peller. He still asks her to relax, since Sovereign doesn't want her gone. He's also sure Gwen Carver has a soft spot for her. 
but when she asks, he directly states that he wants 60% commission for any future work she does. If she refuses, he threatens to call their mutual friends at Sovereign to blow her cover. She tries to bargain for the percentage. She explains that she already gives 30% to the man who keeps her safe. But she is only trying to buy time before her big reveal. She shows him that she never leaves home without her poison. When she asked for water at the bar earlier, it was only to distract Bob so she could slip poison in his drink. She also shows him her timer and thinks he's about to feel its effects very soon. When he starts feeling numb, she explains that she only came over to make sure he hadn't tipped off Sovereign yet. When he loses consciousness, she gets a call from Dave. She reminds him about the note and claims she'll be back soon. But she puts away the phone when she notices Bob is somehow awake again and trying to shoot her. She gets behind the couch and manages to bring him down. She has murdered him, but ended up creating a huge mess. Dave feels bad about sleeping on their night away and wants to make it up to her. When the song from their first dance plays in the car, he thinks it's a sign. They relieve Molly at home and Caroline starts talking to her. Caroline feels bad Molly's dog Coco is lonely and wants a dog too. But Dave reminds them Emma is allergic to dogs and refuses to let them get one. Emma is frantically texting Raj at this point and Dave asks again if she's fine. She claims it's something to do with work and goes outside to take Raj's call. Raj reminds her she's not supposed to contact him, but she claims it's urgent and asks him to see what she sent him. He is pissed she didn't keep a low profile like he asked. She claims she got noticed at the bar and had to take care of it. Raj is sure this brings her on Carver's radar, since Bob's passing is all over the news. She wants to come to him, but Raj warns her against it. Dave gets a call from Molly, who asks if they stayed last night at the Royal Grand Hotel. She sends him a link about Bob getting murdered there. He calls out to Emma and takes her in a room to read out the article. The police are looking for a couple at the bar who are sitting with Bob. Dave freaks out, because this is clearly about them, and wants to call the police. But Emma asks how they will explain their fake names and her wearing a wig. He knows this looks bad for them too. They decide to wait it out. She also discusses how Bob took the drinking tab to his room, so they don't know who they are. When Emma looks nervous too, he tries to comfort her. She claims she's only freaking out because she also needs to go to an important work meeting. Dave points out that she just got back. She assures him she will be back from boys by Monday. They plan to call the police after she gets back. That night, she knows the situation is much worse now. Her car arrives in the morning, and she asks Wyatt to go easy on his dad. She even assures Caroline she will be back soon. After informing Dave about Wyatt's medicines, she lets him know she loves him. He assures her he will come to get her at the airport when she's back. Dave finds another article with a photo of them doing shots with Bob. He's nervous again at night and tries to call Emma, but gets her voicemail. Dave is eager to pick up Emma at the airport. He keeps waiting with the others and tries to call her when she's late. Her flight has already landed, but the receptionist doesn't have her name on the list. He keeps calling her and keeps getting her voicemail. As he finally gives up and walks back to his car, a man follows him. He introduces himself as Toby Berman from NYPD Homicide. He is there with his partner, Detective Karen Shaw, and they want to interrogate him. Dave explains his story and claims they were planning to call the police after she got back. But he is more worried that Emma didn't come back from boys and wants them to find out about it. Toby assures him they will do it after they speak to him. He asks if he's being accused of something and wants a lawyer. Toby assures him being nervous is normal and claims they are just looking for information. Dave explains about the night at the hotel and claims both of them didn't know Bob. He got late for their dinner, so he thinks Bob must have started chatting with Emma. When Karen asks about the fake names, he explains that they were trying to do role play to spice things up. But he admits this is the first time they have done something like this. They are joined by Special Agent Carver, who is part of a special task force helping with the investigation. Dave explains that he has been married to Emma for seven years and has two children. Wyatt is his kid from his previous marriage, and he had Caroline with Emma. On Carver's gesture, Karen gives him a photo to identify. She explains that the woman in the photo is the real Emma Rayburn, which is his wife's maiden name. But Emma passed eight years ago, and his wife took her identity. When he seems more confused, Carver wants to show him some pictures. She shows a photo of Emma in disguise at the Buenos Aires airport. She claims someone was murdered there a few hours before she arrived but he claims she was in Nebraska at the time. She also informs Dave that Bob or Robert Kitterman was using an alias. His real name was Derek Worley, and he was a hitman. When she shows him a photo of Rajendra Bakshi, Dave recognizes him as his wife's supervisor. Carver explains that Raj is a black marketeer working with the dark web. He is operating out of Berlin and serves as his wife's handler. She also shows him another proof that his wife's real name is Anna Peller. She is wanted for murders across many continents. They need his help to find her, but Dave is in shock and starts laughing. When he gets back home, he looks through Emma's stuff and finally finds a locked trunk. It has all kinds of injections and devices. He also finds wigs, cash and passports hidden under that. When he takes out another layer, he finds a rifle. Carver comes to the house and introduces him to Agent Jai, whom she claims is working with her at the agency. She asks to come in and takes a family photo. Meanwhile, Emma has used another passport to reach Raj in Berlin. 
He isn't happy she made the trip. Carver claims she wants to help Dave ensure his family is safe. She is sure his feelings towards his wife must be complicated. Emma admits she messed up in New York, but wants to find a way out of it. Raj explains that she was bound to attract the attention of the Sovereign after murdering someone as connected as Bob. He knows she has Carver's attention now, and she won't let it go so easily. Carver explains to Dave that Emma is very dangerous. She asks him to recheck his loyalty to her and let her search the house. But Dave doesn't let her do it without a warrant. Emma is frustrated, because she feels she does all the dirty work, and Raj takes money for it. He lets her know how much he has protected her. Raj reminds her she has been on the tip sheet since she was sighted at Tel Aviv. He tries his best, but she made it worse by going to a luxury hotel. She protests she only did it because she forgot their anniversary. Carver insists Emma is a murderer and incapable of love. Raj thinks her head isn't in the game recently. She reminds him that she's wanted to get out of this mess for a long time. He gives her the passports for Dave and the kids she asked for. She just wants to get her family to safety, and then she's done with this life. Raj wants her to know this is an ongoing cycle. She is only done till the money runs out and they come after her. In that case, she will need more money and a job to protect herself. When she looks at the rearview mirror, she can tell a wagon with sovereigns is following them. Jai gets a message from someone informing her that they are on Emma's trail. Carver claims she will continue the conversation with Dave later. Emma asks Raj to pull over. She runs out of the car and two agents follow her. She tries to blend in, and the man soon loses track of her. When he claims that he can't find her, she comes from behind and knocks him out. The woman spots her and starts running after her. She keeps chasing Emma even at the train station. But Emma comes from behind her and chokes her with a bag. She keeps choking her, and finally shoots her with her own tranquilizer gun. Raj helps her get in the car, but someone starts shooting at them. Raj fires back and starts driving after a while. Emma notices that Raj has been shot and takes over the wheel. She keeps driving till she can park in a corner. She calls out to him, but realizes Raj is gone. Dave is going through her stuff and calls a random number. He keeps calling, but the numbers don't exist. When Emma gets out of the car, she hears Raj's phone ringing. She checks the number and knows it's Dave. She picks it up, but he can only hear her breathing. She asks if he's alone, and how he found the number. He is already frustrated, and shouts at her about finding the number in his wife's murder box. She asks if the kids are safe, and wants him to step out of the house. She apologizes, but he wants to know which part she is sorry about. He recalls everything he had to go through with the agents, and doesn't know who she is anymore. She admits she lied about what she does, but not about her feelings. He reminds her they have children to protect. But he claims he was relieved when he found out the truth about her. He thinks it's funny, because he was happier when he learned she is distant with him because of what she does. She confirms that she has always loved him. He still loves her too, even if he doesn't want to. But he knows they're in this together. She doesn't want to involve him in her mess, but he notices her number is from Berlin. He knows she can't come back to New York, so he decides to go to Berlin. He calls her when he lands, and notices someone waiting for him with a Jack Dawson card. The driver brings him to a bar. He hears Emma ordering coffee and goes over to sit next to her. He still feels this is a lot to process. She comes clean about her name being Anna, and her taking out people for money. But she claims Dave and the kids were never her cover. She explains that she only left to make arrangements for their safety. When she gives him the passports, he asks what else she lied about. He learns that everything about her parents and her aunt in San Diego was a lie. She explains that she was born in the States, and her dad was a secret service agent. He was removed before he wanted, so he started his own business. He built a private security company called Sovereign with an intelligence agent named Gwen Carver. Dave knows this is the same woman who is investigating her. She explains that Carver heads Sovereign now. After her dad passed away, she took Emma in and trained her. Carver convinced Emma some people are bad, so she believed her. Emma explains that she did a job for her in Boston, where she met Dave at the bar. When he talked to her like a real person, she wanted to start a normal life with him. She claims he was the first person she loved, after which she found Wyatt. When Caroline came along after she got pregnant, she thought she has the perfect life. When Dave comments on how she still continued working, she explains that she had to keep doing it to fund the protection from Raj. This is her job, and she has never known how to do anything else. When he suggests she can take a class, she promises she wants to do that when all this is over. She misses him, and the normal life she had with her family. He loves her too, but thinks murdering is too bad. She understands, and promises that after she ties up some loose ends, it's all over. Carlo and Jai enter the bar and find her. She asks Dave to keep calm, since she has a plan. She introduces Dave to Jai, who grew up with her, and they were practically sisters. Jai wants Emma to come along, but she claims she's in the middle of a private conversation. When a man tries to force her, Dave intervenes and Emma knocks him out. But Jai tranquilizes Emma and captures Dave too. Emma wakes up alone in a room. When she's looking around, she hears her children. She watches them playing with Carver. The kids are happy to see her, and Caroline asks if Carver is their grandma. When she asks for Dave, Carver claims he's resting. Carver tells the kids she needs to speak to Emma alone. 
She offers to show them a special playhouse. They ask if they can bring the puppy along, and Emma allows them to. Carver asks Carlo to set up the video games for them. Emma thinks she shouldn't have involved the kids. Carver knows this must have been Emma's plan to make Dave lead them to her, so she can get her revenge. But she wants Emma to know it's not so easy. She assures her the kids will be fine, even if she doubts how she is raising them. When she addresses her as Anna, Emma wants to make sure she knows her new name. Carver claims to understand where she's coming from. But she asks why Emma wants to ruin a perfect life, just so she can stay with David from New Jersey. Emma insists she's done with all this, and claims she will not let Carver take her kids. Carver wants her to stop with the self-pity and reminds her how powerful she is. Carver explains that she just wants Emma back in her life. She promises her kids won't be hurt, but she still needs to get rid of Dave. She gives her a gun with one bullet so she can shoot Dave. Carver doesn't want to hurt him, because Emma got him involved. Moreover, Emma shooting Dave will make Carver trust her more. Emma doesn't want to do it, but Carver threatens her kids. She claims she can teach them all sorts of things. Emma tucks the gun in her pants before meeting Dave. She takes him for a walk, but he keeps asking questions. She informs him he needs to stay calm, because there's a sniper on them. She also explains that the kids are safe. When he freaks out, she asks him to hold her like he used to. When he reluctantly hugs her, she whispers to him that Carver wants him gone. As the sniper points at Dave's back, she apologizes and shoots him. She throws the gun next to him and waits for the vehicle to approach. When the woman inside it confirms the shot on the phone, Emma checks the location of the sniper. She stands behind the tree, where she won't be visible. When the woman comes to her side to move Dave's body, Emma shoots her. Dave wakes up to find the woman lying next to him. As he rolls away, he remembers what Emma told him earlier. When they were hugging, Emma assured him she will not murder him. She claims it's a clean shot with no vitals, and she knows what she's doing. She asks him to trust her and feign being deceased. Emma soon finds the sniper, and Dave hears a shot. He's pissed that she shot him, but she claims it will be fine. It's a slow bleed, and he will survive once they get him to the hospital. She unties him and claims she needs to work. They spot another man, but she expertly shoots him. She takes the man's tranquilizer gun and asks Dave to hide when someone else approaches. She shoots the other man too. She knows all this is a lot for him, but she needs him to stay calm so they can make this work. She asks him to go to the kids in the guest house and buy her some time. She gives him the gun, and asks him to just point and shoot. Carver is worried there's no word from outside, and hopes Emma is not getting emotional. Jai gets hit on the chest, but she's wearing a vest. They know Emma is there, but Carver asks Jai to make sure they get Emma alive. Emma jumps down from the roof and gets into a tussle with Jai. Dave notices Carlo coming out of the guest house, and instantly shoots him with a tranquilizer. He drags him to a chair quietly, so the kids don't notice. Emma and Jai are constantly fighting, which eventually ends with Emma stabbing her in the neck. Caroline is excited to see Dave and hugs him. Since Carver is missing, Emma starts looking for her. When Carver is walking, she can hear Emma talking to her, but can't see her. Emma is very quick and runs around without getting noticed. She keeps teasing Carver for not being a better shot. When she hears Emma, Carver starts firing in all directions randomly. She soon runs out of bullets and starts running. Emma tackles her, and she realizes she has been shot. Carver asks Emma to finish her, but her family is waiting for her. She reaches the guest house and asks the kids to hurry. She even allows them to take Tuffy the puppy with them. When they're in the car, Caroline starts cribbing about a car seat. Emma insists they need to go to the hospital first. But apart from that, the kids are also concerned about food. Dave feels dizzy, but the children's banter keeps him conscious. He insists they need to listen to what Emma says. She is glad Dave is supporting her too. When they all wonder where they're going, Emma asks them to trust her. 